Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of Format Podcast Live. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So obviously, as you know, if you follow this channel, we normally do our live shows on Saturday nights at 7 p.m. But I've been away for uh, I was away last week, didn't get to do a show Saturday night and a lot of stuff has gone on since I've been gone. No way I can cover it all. But um, I figured I'd get on here and and do a show tonight, kind of get back in the flow and talk about some things I've been talking about uh, or I've been thinking about. Excuse me. So I definitely uh, want to get to that. As you can see from the thumbnail, we got some interesting topics lined up for you. Um, some of this stuff you might have already heard commentary on over the last week or so, but uh, definitely wanted to give my thoughts on these things and discuss it. Um, if you see me looking to the right, it's because on my second monitor, I got the uh, the Celtics and Cavs game going to be on. So definitely want to see what's going on there. But before we get to our show, you already know what time it is. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you give us that like, that five star review, and drop a comment. All that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm, helps us find more sports fans, helps more sports fans find us. And finally, make sure you write it down, put it in your phone, set an alarm, do whatever you got to do to remember. Saturday nights at 7 p.m., we are live here on the Format Podcast, and we'll give you the opportunity to call in, talk to us, get at me. I love it. I can't wait. All right. So um, also keep this in mind if you're uh, if you're watching this at a later time, if you're watching live now, um, please go ahead and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Like I said in the little blurb there a minute ago, um, share the channel with other people. We're trying to get to 2000 uh, subscribers before the end of the month. We definitely made a lot of progress. It's it's out on YouTube how your second thousand subscribers comes a lot faster than your first. But anyway, yeah, please make sure you do that. Please make sure you like in the channel when you come into the chat. Make sure you let us know where you're coming in from. All right. So let, let's get to it. Man. Okay. So let, let's go ahead and move to the next topic. What are we going to talk about here? This one is, uh, of course, right? It, it's NBA. It's playoff time. And even though he's no longer playing, we still got to talk about LeBron James. It is so amazing how this guy can stay in the sports media cycle. But again, brilliant marketing, ingenious. And when you're that big, you're going to stay in the news, right? Because uh, relevancy is key. So let's talk a little bit about that. So um, we know that the Lakers went out in a gentleman's sweep, uh, four games to one against the um, against the uh, Denver Nuggets, defending champion Denver Nuggets. And we know that uh, Darvin Ham was fired after that. And I talked about this on the last live show. And it was crazy because Darvin Ham obviously uh, walked in after what, a 33 win season where coincidentally Frank Vogel, who just got fired from the Suns, got fired from the Lakers. That was two years ago. And Darvin Ham last season takes the Lakers to the Western Conference Finals. This year, he takes the Lakers and they win the inaugural uh, in-season tournament. And then after they get gentlemen swept out by the Denver Nuggets, they get they fire him, which I thought was really interesting. All of a sudden, he forgot how to coach. He did all that and he forgot how to coach. But, you know, I'm not going to get into LeBron's role in that. But you, you saw some of the things and you've heard some of the things and you've heard things that people in the sports media have had to say about it, which. I thought was really interesting and we'll we'll tackle that and touch on it a little bit later. Anyway, um so we know how great LeBron's career has been and we're not going to get back into that, but he also uh is a guy who one thing I respect about LeBron, I don't I don't really like how he's tried to manipulate his teams all the time in terms of every time he goes somewhere totally revamp the roster blah blah blah. And that's why I've often said uh, that if I had a chance to get LeBron on my team, I'm a Celtics fan. If I had a chance to get LeBron, I don't I don't want it because he's going to totally destroy your roster to get the situation and the type of players that he needs and kill your future. So you mortgage it for a chance at winning a championship. Now, in fairness, he has won a championship on every team he's been on. So I guess you have to say, OK, um, the empirical evidence is LeBron comes to your team, you win a championship. But at this stage in his career, nah, definitely not. Um, I'm not with it. But anyway. <clears throat> excuse me so now we're in this situation where uh uh lebron is an unrestricted uh free agent and so he can walk and go somewhere else if he wants um but by all reports he's extremely happy in los angeles we know he's got a number of business dealings there he's got his production company there i think i heard that he's building a hundred million dollar mansion in uh well i can't brentwood or beverly i'm not sure exactly where but he's building a new hundred million dollar mansion there so it seems like 
he is um, intending to kind of spend the rest of his time there or at least have his main residence there. So um, his kids are quite settled in L.A. He appears to really like it. So um, the thought is now, it, will LeBron go somewhere else to finish out his career? And um, what what I heard reported and what I read was that the Los Angeles Lakers are looking to keep LeBron James on any terms. Let's hear what Shannon Sharp had to say on his show, Nightcap, with um, Chad Ochocinco, and he's going to briefly discuss it, then we'll come back. The Lakers are hoping to retain LeBron this offseason. Dave McMenamin reported the Lakers intend to have LeBron James come back on any terms he want to, whether it be a one-year deal, two-year deal, three-year deal, whatever. They love to continue to have LeBron James in the purple and gold until he calls it quits, whenever that may be. Mm. No surprise. Um, he's still playing at an elite level. He gave you 25, 8, and 7 um, this year. Right. Uh, he's still box office. He's still playing. He, he's, he's shown no signs of, of, of decline. And it's the Lakers. The Lakers are about stars. When mm -hmm. you go, look, you go, go, there's only a couple handful of places. Go to the Laker games and you see all the stars lined up. Right. You go to you go to the uh, Knicks game. You see all the stars, the stars lined, lined up. That's up. what it's about. Yeah. Okay, so those are uh, Shannon Sharp's comments. Uh, interesting that I think the Lakers um, chose to utilize the the verbiage any terms that he wants, and I didn't like that because again, remember in that first segment I talked about I don't like giving players that unfettered power, and if I had a front office, I would not do it because again, when you do that you are left in the lurch when that player decides to move on or that player moves on or you, now you may not have a future. And again, that player is not going to be held responsible for those personnel decisions you are. So I don't like it. If the player could be held responsible in, in some way, then cool. I got no problem with that. But since they can't, nah, they don't need personnel power. I'm not with that. Okay, so we know that the Lakers are and always have been and always will be about star power. We know what Los Angeles represents as a city uh, in terms of Hollywood and all of that. And you heard Shannon talk about at the big games, you see all the stars there, kind of like you see them with the Knicks, but it's even more so in LA. And so we know that that's what the Lakers are about. Uh, Dr. Great, the late great Dr. Buss, Jeannie Buss, the Lakers owner, her dad, he was the one that made made the Lakers thing into a show off the court. Of course, we know that Magic Johnson architect the showtime and all that, but off the court, we know that uh, Jerry Buss really made the Lakers game, the hap the Lakers games, the happenings for celebrities. They put the Laker club in the forum and all that that he uh, introduced the Laker girls and blah, 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 so on and so forth. He understood extremely well, the off court entertainment portion of the Lakers and making it a star studded event, every game And the Lakers truly, truly believe in that. Maybe to a fault, maybe to a fault. And here's the other thing, though, right? We know that Magic loved Magic Johnson. That is, loved the entertainment value. But what? He also loved to win. So one time, Magic Johnson, I think, was asked a question. And his answer was, you play this game for three reasons. To win, to have fun, and to make people happy. So make people happy. That's the showmanship element. To have fun. He loves playing basketball. He's like a big kid on the court. But what was his first thing? To win. So everyone... Everyone who knows Magic or played against Magic, et cetera, they're going to tell you, even though he's smiling and all that, he's trying to kill you because he's a psycho competitor. And Magic even talks about, you know, during the Dream Team practices and all of that against Michael Jordan when he and the rest of the older guys were on their way down, but Michael Jordan had reached his peak and would continue to stay there for the next how long. Magic refused to hand over the reins until he was basically forced to by Michael Jordan because Magic was a psychomaniacal competitor, even though he's smiling all the time, looks happy. Magic wanted to beat you. Make no mistake about it. And Bird knew that. But anyway, um, so with that, he had that attitude as well that the Lakers are about championships. And of course, Shaq and Kobe had that attitude. And so you wonder and you say, OK, um, what is that about? Right. Because. Lakers now seem like they're more about star power and about putting on a show than they are about winning. And I just don't get with that because if they were really about winning and about championships, they wouldn't be willing to mortgage their future on LeBron James and dealing with everything that comes with him. And why do I say that? So, <coughs> excuse me. Now, remember I said earlier that everywhere LeBron has been, he brings a championship. And we know that in sports, deep playoff runs, especially when you get a lot of home games and championships, earn franchises tons of money. 
So LeBron James did win a championship, but he won the bubble championship. And that was different, obviously, because to that point, LeBron James had not even finished a season in Los Angeles because of injuries, nor had Anthony Davis. Now, everybody, my brother always gets on me about this. Everybody had to play under the same conditions, and that's true. But the fact is this. Uh, LeBron James having been injury prone to that point, uh, Anthony Davis having been injury prone to that point, at least in their time with the Lakers, they got all that extra time to heal up and get right. And when you're already among the best players in the league and then you don't have to worry about the physical toll on your body because you've been able to get well and stay well, well, it makes a run through a uh, playoff season a little easier. I'm not going to say it makes it easy, but it makes it a little easier. And I think that had a lot to do with the Lakers winning that championship. Now, here's the other component. Yes, LeBron brought the Lakers a championship in the bubble, but did that help with the financial side? No, it didn't because the Lakers couldn't sell tickets. They couldn't have people pay for parking. They couldn't have people pay for concessions. People weren't buying all the, the Lakers memorabilia, et cetera, et cetera. So even though he won the championship from the financial side, it wasn't the same way like winning a championship would be in a regular year because all that revenue that's normally generated from winning one was not generated through that particular playoff run. So I get it, but, uh, you know, it, it didn't quite work right. So I, I say all this to say that you are saying as the Lakers, you're winning, you're willing because you love the star power to keep LeBron under any terms. But what is it going to net you? It's not netting you what it normally would. And so that's my thought on that. Now, you've also mortgaged the future. You don't have much draft capital coming forward. You got rid of all your young talent because, of course, LeBron James wanted them all out of there. He wanted to revamp the roster. Watch. Lakers are going to be struggling for a minute after LeBron is gone. Now, we'll see what AD can do when he's the man by himself. He had a really great season this season. Um, hope he, hopefully he can continue that. Not sure, but hopefully he can continue that. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see when, when LeBron is done what it is. All right. So now you're in a situation again. You are looking to keep LeBron by any terms. And now you have a coaching search. Because remember, we talked about this, opened up the segment. Darvin Ham got fired. Cool. Now you're looking for coaches and you're saying, oh, man, what are we going to do for coaches? And I read today that J.J. Redick has reportedly emerged as the front runner for that job. <laughs> Excuse me. Are you kidding me? J.J. Redick is now the front runner for the Los Angeles Lakers coaching job. A guy who's never head coached anywhere. That does that doesn't make any sense to me. Well, why would he be the front runner? Why? Because he's LeBron's guy. And we'll get to that a little bit more. But um, Udonis Haslam uh, recently retired. And I think he works in the Miami Heat front office now. And he's a legend and one of the most he's a legend with the Heat organization, I should say, and one of the most respected guys in the league. And he actually had some interesting commentary to make on uh, J.J. Redick possibly being the new head coach of the of the um, of the Los Angeles Lakers. So here was his quote, quote. If it's J.J. Redick, it's going to be a cynical locker room. You're going to have guys saying, coach going to do a podcast after the game with LeBron. You're going to have a cynical locker room of guys who are going to side-eye everything J.J. says because they're going to wonder, is this J.J.'s message or LeBron's message? Unquote. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't even know why J.J. Redick would be a consideration. And th this is interesting, right? So you you question that. Obviously, he doesn't have coaching chops, and he seems like an X's and O's guy. But is he really an X's and O's guy, or is he an analytics guy? Because you're always talking – you always hear him talking about the analytics and about the numbers. And it was on a podcast, um, the Mind the Game podcast with him and LeBron a couple weeks ago where LeBron basically told him, you know, get the F out of here with those analytics. I, I don't get it, right? And JJ, we know it's a big analytics guy and so on and so forth. So the, the question is, if JJ Redick were to get the job, and I'm not saying he's going to, but he's reportedly emerged as a front runner, how's he going to get respect from the other players? Because if I'm a player, I'm looking at JJ Redick and I'm like, you were a role player your whole career. Now, Steve, Steve Kerr was a role player his whole career, but um, he's been around a lot of champions. He's been around Michael Jordan. Obviously, he's been around uh, Tim Duncan, so he knows what it takes to win. He was around Greg Popovich, one of the greatest coaches of all time, so he knows about coaching. He was around Phil Jackson. Then he was a front office guy. So Steve Kerr has uh, won or been at a high level in the NBA around high-level people for a long time, so I get that. J.J. Reddick, can we really say that? Not really sure. So the question is, now you got a situation where these players are going to look at him like, yo, I could have, you know, I'll bust your, 
you're 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 whatever you know what i'm saying like i'm better than you i'm better than you were at your peak a lot of players are probably going to think that way and then to udonis haslam's point the next thing they're going to be thinking is um basically you just lebron's mouthpiece like why should i listen to you right you all you're doing is saying what you know lebron wants you to say and that's the other thing if you're jj ready and you get this job and you need to not that anyone ever has for the most part how could you hold lebron accountable for anything you guys are making podcasts together you're drinking wine you're you know your buddies or whatever you're not going to have that that separation that leadership normally needs to have between leadership and the players now not saying that you can't have a quality relationship with your star player that's great when you have that but there still needs to be some level of separation because there are going to be times maybe you need to chastise maybe you need to speak harshly etc and, and you know lebron is not going to have that from jj reddick now I'm sure he would love to have J.J. Reddick first, but if things don't go well, well, J.J. Reddick knows what he's going to be. He's going to be the sacrificial lamb, right? Another one. Yet another one. But anyway, uh, he so J.J. Reddick has to know what would happen if he's coaching LeBron or coaching the Lakers. He would just be a LeBron proxy, and I think all the other players know that, and it would astound me if the Lakers front office actually made this move because then you're like, well, why you really don't care about winning at all if you're doing this? Like, what is wrong with you? And so the other question comes to me, and now, now I'm thinking, was this the real reason for the Mind the Game podcast? Was this what it was all about? To be a situation where you could showcase J.J. Reddick's quote-unquote uh, basketball mind or his X's and O's and, and how smart he is on, on the whiteboard? By the way, all, all the money those guys have, why couldn't they get a whiteboard to, to show those concepts a little better or you know, design the graphics on screen instead of um instead of that little clipboard or the, the paper that JJ Reddick has. I don't know what's the deal with that. But anyway, um, yeah. So was this the real reason for the Mind the Game podcast? And let me say again, Mind the Game podcast is pretty good if you want to learn some stuff about basketball. Just watch it knowing that you're gonna get a healthy dose of LeBron James propaganda. Know that. But in terms of the basketball, not bad at all. So anyway, um, yeah, again. This is LeBron James trying to manipulate everything. Now, has that manipulative way ended up being extremely successful for him, for his businesses, for his uh, for his friends, for his um, for his family in life? Absolutely. So you can't be mad at that. But also you take that with a grain of salt and say, eh, you're trying to manipulate everything, grease the skids. You not you're not quite what you say you are or what a lot of people say you are. But anyway, um. Yeah, so that JJ Reddick thing is really interesting. And I'm wondering if you're if you're the Lakers, why would you allow that? But again, the report is that they'll uh they want to bring back LeBron basically under any terms he wants. So interesting. But here I am again with the why. And the question is, why would you be willing to continue to destroy your future even more for LeBron James, who likely is done winning championships? Why? And was it worth it to deal with him? Because remember, I talked earlier about how much money you make as an organization with a long playoff run. They weren't able to make that with the bubble championship. If they had that through a normal playoff run, I got it. But why? You know, the the, the whole stardom thing and the superstar thing and the Lakers thing, that's only but so much. But the real money is in winning chips. So I don't know. Um, Since LeBron has been there in L.A., he's missed the playoffs once, went out in the first round twice, got the bubble championship and. You know, we just talked about that. That was the bubble. So it didn't make the Lakers money because the long playoff run and it didn't have the home games. Right. So we talk about that. And now there's no discernible future for you guys because of the decisions LeBron has forced you into making and in getting rid of uh, most of your young talent, so on and so forth. And you still want to get back into bed with this guy. You're still trying to do it. I just don't get it. I just don't. And then. You hear the reports that the Lakers would be willing to possibly draft Bronny, LeBron's son, because we know that he's made it clear over the years that that's something that he really would love to do is be able to play with his son uh, before he's done playing. Now, it may end up that he and his son are in the league together at the same time, but he may not be on the same team. That's something that I kind of want to look out for and I want to watch and I want to see. Should be interesting. Uh, but yeah, the Lakers look like they're willing to do anything to keep LeBron. And I just can't understand why, because you know, you're going to have some bad years. You know, you're going to have some bad years, but you're just kicking the can down the road. I, I don't know. Uh, okay. So before we move on to the next topic, quick side note on this LeBron thing, right? Has anyone noticed that more and more people in the media are going at LeBron 
What do I mean by that? Or more so, finally telling the truth when it comes to LeBron? Hmm. You got Kendrick Perkins, Shannon Sharp, two of LeBron's biggest cheerleaders in the media, guys that were literally fighting on air about a month ago, not literally fighting like throwing fists at one another, but uh, verbally arguing heavily uh, a couple of uh, about a month ago on the air about who's been on LeBron's hype train longer. Um, you have uh, Michael Wilbon going in on LeBron about the Darvin Ham firing, basically, uh, you know, saying if you're the GOAT, you don't act this way, get some accountability, stop blaming coaches, stop getting coaches fired. Uh, you have Stephen A. Smith ranting about LeBron's obsession with controlling the narrative and controlling the media, um, how they how they they being clutch sports actually sent somebody to Kevin uh, Kendrick Perkins to uh, basically chastise him on what he said about LeBron on TV, basically not, you know, rubbing LeBron's feet on, on national live TV. Uh, they sent someone to cat, uh, chastise him. Um, Rick Buecher talking about how clutch sports sent him an email. Uh, lobbying for LeBron James to be the MVP when he clearly didn't deserve it, uh, deserve it this year. Now, quick so side note, um, Rick Buecher's never been one of those guys that's a LeBron sycophant. That's just not him. He's generally pretty even-handed and, and generally tells the truth when it comes to LeBron. But it was interesting that he let that nugget slip um, on, on TV talking about it. Um, and then you hear Reggie Miller the other night taking a shot at LeBron. Now, it had to be LeBron, right, during the T-Wolves game. Uh, he was talking about how refreshing it is that you have a 22 year old guy and Ant Edwards taking accountability, saying this loss was on me. I have to play better. I have to do better as the guy on this team. And of course, um, Reggie Miller said that we have Mount Rushmore level players in this game who, who won't do that. And so <laughs> everyone's like, oh, he's talking about LeBron. He's talking about LeBron. And, um, you know, that was awesome. Definitely. I, I loved to hear that. But then. What really disappointed me is that Reggie Miller following that uh, yesterday was on the Dan Patrick show and Dan Patrick being the outstanding veteran journalist that he is asked him about it. So let's hear that. And then we'll get back and briefly talk about it. Here is Reggie during the game, last game, possibly taking a shot at LeBron James. Oh, come on. We've got certain guys, veteran status in our game that are on a lot of people's Mount Rushmore that like to deflect and and point fingers at other. Here's a 22 year old saying, This is on me. It's my fault. Who are you taking yeah. a shot at? Uh, I'm talking, to, uh, taking a shot in general. I, I'm trying to give credit and creed to a 20 year old, 22 to 22 year old, um, because I want to put myself in his shoes, right? And I remember when I was 21, 22, I don't know if I could have gotten in front of a camera with the world watching and said, This is on me. And I know a lot of people want to think and assume it's LeBron I'm taking shots at because, look, I've been in those locker rooms when certain veterans shy away from that. And it's quick to always pile on LeBron. Um, if it was LeBron, I would have said LeBron James. But you right? said current players Mount Rushmore. So you, oh, you just assume it's LeBron? Well, who else is it going to be? It, it, it could only be, be just, KD or Steph. Those are the only possible guys who could be on the current Mount current Mount Rushmore. It's more so. But than, you gave oh, Ant-Man credit, which I'm fine yeah. with. You just brought in another portion when you said the current Mount Rushmore. Well, I've seen a lot of guys deflect those criticisms when here's a 22-year-old step it up taking responsibility so you could take it either way you want is it a shot at lebron absolutely not because i've seen him do the same thing atman has done too okay is there a player in your head then if you say it's not lebron <laughs> because I you know what you did to... say this about the coaches got fired but the players either last week or the week yes. before so I you did. were saying that you got coaches fired in Phoenix and Los Angeles where players maybe well, didn't no, take no, the blame. No. What I said was the coaches, unfortunately, are always the first to go because the players have guaranteed contracts. Yes. So coaches are always the first to go, which is unfortunate. I said we need to look more so at the players and more so who's putting the rosters together, Theodore. Okay, but do you have a player in mind – because you said current Mount Rushmore. If it's not LeBron. I will leave it up to interpretation. 
Yeah, but that's part of the problem. Now we bring in all these other people. So you took it. You took a shot at maybe LeBron or KD because they didn't take ownership or blame for the coaches getting. How about you just nod your head? Was it LeBron? No, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> what? So there you go. You hear Reggie Miller on the Dan Patrick show and shouts to Dan Patrick. That's a veteran journalist. That's an old school journalist. He would not let go of that. He kept pushing back because if you're honest, you heard the clip, you heard what Reggie Miller said. Who else could it have been? It had to have been LeBron, but you know, he doesn't want to anger the powers that be. So he didn't want to come out and say it. And that kind of disappointed me because Reggie Miller, he's a hall of famer. His place in the game and in history is um, secure. There's nothing more he can do and nothing that anyone can take away from him. So why does he feel that beholden to not tell the truth? Clearly, you meant something when you made the original comment about Mount Rushmore guys in today's game who won't do that. Just come out and say it. But I guess, you know, he's not going to. But uh, yeah, shouts to Dan Patrick for, you know, really holding on to that as a journalist and and really, you know, uh, to quote Bumpy Knuckles, I'm like a pit with a leg with a leg in his mouth. I'll bring it home. And that's what Dan Patrick was absolutely doing. He was not letting go of uh, Reggie's leg on that. He was going to bring it home. But Reggie, uh, I'm not going to say adroitly, but Reggie refused to fall into the trap and he wasn't going to admit who he was talking about, even though we all know. And I thought that was pretty good. Um, what? OK, Nino, what did Braun say that gave us the right to say that he got ham fired? It's not so much what he said, but it's the things that we've seen. So one, uh, let me answer your question here, Nino. Um, one of the things is we've seen LeBron get coach after coach fired over the last 21 years. Right. So he's going into his 10th coach um, at the start of this season and 22 seasons. That's two point two coaches. Um, uh, that that's a new coach, I should say, every 2.2 years, if you do the math in his career. And so one of the biggest things was we watched, first of all, if LeBron had wanted Darvin Ham there, Darvin Ham would still be there. I think we can agree on that. Um, also, we watched uh, LeBron James in a situation where Darvin Ham was drawing up the play. LeBron completely ignored him, walked away while his teammates and his coach were still in the huddle. All of that speaks to just a general disdain and a disrespect for your head coach. So, I mean, realistically, LeBron doesn't have to come out and say, yeah, I got him fired. I didn't want him to be here. We kind of know what the deal is when you're that guy and you're that powerful. A coach is not going anywhere if you want him there. And so, you know, it's it's uh, fair to deduce also based on his history that LeBron is the reason that that guy is not there anymore. You can go back. You can look at uh, LeBron having gotten rid of uh, Spolster, or not gotten rid of, attempting to get rid of Coach Spolster in Miami. And that would have happened under a weaker regime, but Pat Riley was not going to allow that. So anyway, um, yeah, that that's the deal on that. So it, it was real interesting, those uh, Reggie Miller comments yesterday. and But what really sucked, too, is the fact that he refused to come forward and take accountability for that. But we kind of we kind of. um. Uh, got away from the original uh, topic of this uh, particular segment in discussing uh, LeBron James and the Lakers' willingness to keep him uh, under any terms. So it's I'm looking forward to see what happens next. I want to see who the next head coach of the Lakers is. Is it going to be J.J. Redick? I want to see uh, if the Lakers draft Bronny James and take a roster spot from someone who deserves it for someone who doesn't. I want to see everything that's going to go on there. So, yeah, we got it.